Good afternoon, ladies. I'm the CEO of the hot chocolate company, Nestle, and I'm here to tell you why you need to invest in our hot chocolate and how it will work for your store. Around the holidays, you would usually expect hot cocoa to be in higher demand. However, right now, the price your current supplier, Swiss Miss, has their hot cocoa at is way too high, which is why the demand for the said brand is low. The people know there are substitutes. I don't see why we should have to change our brand. We could just attach deals to the brand we already have. PED, or Price Elasticity of Demand, measures the responsiveness of a demand for a product following a change in its own price. It does not matter that you add deals. Your customers will see that there are alternatives, such as us, and they will choose to buy our product. By checking your PED, it is clear that you need our help. A weakness of the PED is that there are a lot of variations in the calculations, and it is very difficult to calculate it from historical records. But a strength is that the formula can tell you what you need to know, and it can help you prepare for the future. As you see here by the graph, Swiss Miss is very elastic. Elasticity is a numerical measure of responsiveness of one variable following a change in another variable. Price elasticity of a demand of a product. There are tons of business relevance. For example, with Swiss Miss Hot Cocoa, when you raise the price of it, the PED graph in calculation shows how elastic or inelastic the product is at said price. With this graph, we can see that when Swiss Miss was at price 1, it had a higher quantity demanded. But then, when it switched to price 2, there's a huge gap between the new price demanded or new quantity demanded. Is that all there is to it? The XCD is a numerical measure of the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for a product following a price change for a related product. A weakness of XCD is it can be calculated incorrectly if the products are not related. A strength is, the higher the price, the more likely it is to, to the com that the consumers will buy a cheaper substitute. If price B goes up, people will begin to buy product A instead. The example of cost of the demand is products are substitutes for each other, which will have positive values for the XCD. If the price of one product goes up, then the people will buy the substitute because of its more favorable relative price. Take a look at this graph. It shows the cross elasticity of demand of a product, in this case Swiss Miss and Nestle hot cocoa. The cross elasticity of demand shows a product, or shows a business, how the price of one product going up affects the substitute and complements of said item. Substitutes are shown when the calculation gives a positive, complements are shown when the calculation gives a negative. By looking at this graph, we can see that um, when the price of Swiss Miss goes up, there is a, it's a close substitution for Nestle hot chocolate because there's a huge gap between the quantity demanded. Also, we notice that when we do like the calculation, which is the, um, the percent change of quantity of B over the percent change of quantity, uh, price of A, we can see that there, it's like closer to zero, which means that it's a very close substitution. I think I understand enough. I'll sleep on it. Have a nice day. And income elasticity of demand, or YED, is defined as the responsiveness of demand when a consumer's income changes. It is defined as the ratio of the change in quantity demanded over the change in income. A very low price elasticity implies that changes in a consumer's income will have little effect on demand. A weakness of the YED is that elasticity values are best seen as estimates and they're not completely accurate. A strength is that it recognizes the relationship between income and demand. For example, inferior goods exhibit a negative relationship between income and demand. An increase in income would cause a decrease in quantity and demand. And customers are more likely to choose Nestle over Swiss Miss because it has a lower cost than their turnover product, which is Swiss Miss, because Swiss Miss is an inferior. Therefore, investing in Nestle instead of Swiss Miss will ultimately benefit Publix because it is more inelastic than Swiss Miss due to it being an inferior good, 
I mean, people are more forced to buy it when their income is lower. Um, and according to the income elasticity of demand, if it if there is a decrease in income, it would cause an increase in quantity demanded. If Nestle's YED were to be calculated, it will have a negative coefficient because it is an inferior good, which shows an inverse relationship.